then and then you wonder why these mainstream libertarians are just so quick to get on the anti-Trump bandwagon. And you know, I don't actually buy him when they go, he's got, you know, authoritarian language. Does he? Does he really? Is that a big change? Is that a big change from, from previous presidents presidents? Though you're you're now again, I'm not saying he doesn't. He does have authoritarian language. I've called him out on it for years. But it's like, I don't know, man. You guys who won't come out and say the hard truths. Uh, just to win brownie points with the establishment. Now when you're also into bashing Trump, kind of makes me go, okay, okay. It just seems like you like to take the popular opinion. You like to take the popular opinion, man. Someone posted uh, in, in the part of the problem, Inner Circle. Fuck, I should be giving you credit for this because it was one of my favorite things I've seen posted uh, this year. Um, but he said, uh, you know, so I'm making this point that you're just trying to get accepted by all the people. You're basically just trying to conform to what everybody tells you is socially accepted. And he basically said, uh, he said in the, in the comment, he goes, all the people calling us uh, Nazis are the same people who would be turning us into the Nazis. Hmm. And I just thought it was a great point. You know, Tom Woods, uh, he put in his book, in, um, in Real Descent, fantastic book. He wrote in it, 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 he put it like this. And I'll, you know, I won't get this exactly right, but he basically said, he was like, look, if you're anti-slavery today in America, it's uh, utterly meaningless. Just an utterly meaningless position to have. Like 99.999% of people are anti-slavery. Slavery was defeated hundreds of years ago. It ain't coming back anytime soon. It's a worthless position. And he goes, but if you were anti-slavery in 1830, it really meant something. That really meant something. It was like it was like 2% of the population, the abolitionist party got, and abolitionist party members were regularly lynched. Like there was like, it was like a dangerous, you had to put your ass on the line. You had to go out against everybody. You know, you had to speak out against what 98% of people were agreeing and go, hey, by the way, you're all like supporting something that's heinous. I, you know, it's, it's really, really tough. We should get rid of this whole system that you think is our way of life. Um. So he goes, so all I can say, he goes, to the PC people who are always trying to like, you know, who are always going along with the crowd, who are going along with all of their professors, all of Hollywood, all of the culture, all of these politicians, um, they go, these guys who are just so, so conformist, he goes, you can be goddamn sure that they would not have been abolitionists in 1830. You could be goddamn sure. And then he goes, who would be an abolitionist? Who would take a radical position that puts them in the 2%? No, they go, I will fight for human freedom, uh, despite how unpopular it is. Now, I don't know. I don't know if I can claim I would have that bravery at the time. I don't really feel like I'm risking getting lynched by doing this. If I was, maybe I'd, I'd slow down. I don't know. Maybe not. But libertarians today at least have an argument to say maybe we would be standing for human freedom with only a couple percentage of people because we're kind of doing that right now. Uh all you guys on the left who are virtue signaling, you would have been vir you're, you're just virtue signaling to the authoritarianism of the day, and you would have done that in any day. But believe me, this one this one isn't any better just because it bases itself around the rights of transgender people. 